Hey, this is Mike Wilmot with Microsoft. Today I want to talk about the Internet of Things, or IoT, and specifically how to implement an Internet of, of Things solution. Now to define IoT, what we're talking about is all these different devices, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions, ultimately trillions of devices over the next 10 to 20 years that are going to be on the Internet communicating with each other and communicating with the cloud. And we want to find out how to enable these types of devices for different scenarios like healthcare, like mining. If we have, say, connected cars, we might have connected airplanes, bicycles, we might have animals that we're tracking, patients. It could be um, all sorts of different things that we're tracking, and we want to find out how to enable that. So today I want to show a scenario that's a, a, a healthcare scenario. And what you're seeing here on the screen right now is a bunch of different devices. You can see that in the middle here where my mouse is, there's different sensors numbers that I've created. Each of these sensors is throwing off different information as you scroll to the right here at a certain date time. So the left is date time. And then I've created just simulated data for things like heart rate, oxygen saturation, maybe there's an activity level for this patient, they have a certain respiratory rate, they live in a certain city, and they have a certain name. So these, this, this device data could be anything you want to throw off, but these, you could be sending this data from hundreds, thousands, millions of devices. So what we're seeing here is I'm, I'm simulating this from a program, but ultimately this is what the, the cloud-enabled database would ultimately see as you, as you upload this data to the cloud. Now ultimately what we want to do is take this data and do something meaningful with it, like surface it on a dashboard. So now that we've got all our streaming data, what I want to do is come back into Power BI. And Power BI is going to allow us to take all the streaming data you see in the background here and actually visualize it with that real-time streaming data. We have a nice set of metrics we're seeing over here, like heart rate, oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, activity level. What I want to do is just put drop in a simple count here as an initial step. And I don't really want to see it in a bar chart format, so I'm going to go over here and change it to a card format. You'll see why I'm doing that later. There's also some things you can do to change the way the label looks over here if you want. And let's just go ahead and take this. We'll pin it. We'll save it as health report. Save and continue. We'll also create a new dashboard called health dash. So we've created a new uh, report and a new dashboard. You'll see that the report shows up here on the side and then the dashboard shows up here. Now this looks pretty simple here, but what you'll see over time is that this actual number is changing as the data behind it streams by. So what we're seeing here is a kind of a new concept in databases where we're actually watching data as it streams by rather than just looking at data at rest. Now the other nice part about Power BI is you can come in here and you can say count for last 60, let's just do a number, 60 seconds. So this is the count for the last 60 seconds. Let's pin this to the dashboard, to the health one. And as we go back to the health, now we'll see that we've got the overall count and the count for the last 60 seconds. And what we can also do is we can continue to ask this streaming data any questions that we want just by clicking this natural language query. So let's go average heart rate. So there's the average heart rate. Let's do it now by, that's for our entire population, by sensor name. So there's our sensors. Let's do it over time for last 100 seconds as a line chart. So now that's the all the sensors we've got. I've got one sensor per person, and that's a line chart. We're seeing that for the last 100 seconds. Let's pin that. Pin that to the health dashboard. For the next step. Let's look at average oxygen set. That's the average of the population. Let's look at it by city. And let's look at it for 100 seconds. And then let's do it 
not just for 100 seconds, but or for the last 100 seconds rather. Let's do it as a map. So now we're going to see this data in kind of the map form, which is which is most appropriate to the zip codes or cities that I had. Let's also go do two more metrics. We've got things like respiratory rate. Let's do it by patient name. And again, each patient name has a sensor on it. Let's do it for last one minute. Let's do it as a funnel chart. I think I messed something up here. I think patient name is not understanding, so let's try to fix that. There we go. So now we have this by funnel chart, patient name, respiratory rate, this funnel chart. Let's pin this thing. And let's just do one more query here. Average. By sensor name. Now each of these patients had a sensor on them, at least you know the way I, I simulated the data. I do it by city, and then we can, instead of just doing it as a geospatial, we can do it as a tree map. And let's do it for last 50 seconds. So this is a way that I don't have to really be in IT, but I can come up with these really interesting insights. We can pin it to the dashboard, and now we can go back to our dashboard and look at all the cool things that we've created on this dashboard. And again, since this data is live streaming data, from back here, we're going to be able to see that over time, our dashboard is going to be live streaming and updated based on the, the query window that we gave for these queries. So hopefully this gives you a sense of what can be done with Power BI in Azure. And I won't go into all the details, but this is kind of where all the magic happens in creating these different jobs and these different databases. And that's a topic for a different day. but. Hopefully that was helpful for you. And again, this is Mike Wilmot talking about the Internet of Things. And feel free to contact me if need be at mikewilm at microsoft.com. Take care.